Now let's turn to Matthew 24, and we'll show you the prediction of Christ concerning the immediate destruction of the city Jerusalem and of the nation of Israel. The 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 3. The disciples came to him and asked him three questions. Master, what, uh, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? But before these two questions, they asked, they asked him one more thing, and what was it? When shall these things be? What things? He had told them in the previous verse, you see all these stones of the temple? For they were showing him the buildings of the temple and the goodly stone. Said, you see all these things? The time is coming when there shall not be left one of these stones upon another that shall not be thrown down. That brought forth this first question. What or when shall these things be? Now turn with me to the 20th chapter or the 21st chapter of the book of Luke, the 20th verse. I want to show you here a more complete description or a prediction rather of the destruction of the city of Jerusalem, the same thing that Daniel had in mind when he told us that that angel told him in verse 26 that the, the, the desolations of Jerusalem would be at the end of a war. In Luke 21, verse 20, When ye therefore shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, that is, when Jerusalem is surrounded by the armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And in verse 24, he continued by stating, Ye shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now Christ was living in the day when Jerusalem was, been, was restored and had been restored for nearly 500 years. But Daniel lived in the day while Jerusalem was destroyed and it was soon to be rebuilt again. All right, now, Daniel predicted not only the, the restoration of the city, but its destruction again by the people of that prince that shall come. And this is when it was fulfilled. Same thing referred to by Jesus here. When you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that Daniel... 926 will be fulfilled. Then know the desolation thereof is nigh, and ye shall fall by the edge of the sword. She shall be led away captive into all nations. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. How long? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That refers to the second coming of Jesus Christ to the earth. Christ will put an end to the times of the Gentiles. Paul referred to the same thing in the 11th chapter of the book of Romans, verse 25, when he said, Blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness, fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Then he mentioned there, So as it is written, All Israel shall be saved. For thou shalt come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. All right, now we have these prophecies of the immediate destruction of Jerusalem. Now going back to Daniel 9, 27, the next verse. We read after this desolation of Jerusalem, sometime after that now, didn't say how long, but after that, because this prince was to come after, the people of this prince would destroy the city again. Well, it tells us that when that prince shall come, he shall confirm the covenant with many for how long? One week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. For the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured out upon the one making desolate. All right, now here we have a prediction in verse 24 of 70 weeks. 70 weeks. The Hebrew word for week here is heptod, which literally means seven. Just like our English word seven. Literally, translated in literal English, 70 sevens are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. 
Seventy sevens of what? Seventy sevens of days? No, that couldn't be it. Seventy sevens of literal weeks? No, that isn't what he's talking about. Seventy sevens of what? Well, you'll notice the background of Daniel's prayer in verse 2. What is he praying about? He is praying concerning the number of years, whereby the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years, not 70 days, or 70 literal weeks, but 70 years in the, de uh, in the desolations of Jerusalem. All right, he's talking ab about years in verse 2 to God, and God is giving him an answer in verse 24 concerning the same thing, telling Daniel that 77 of years are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and so on. Now, not only do we have the fact of the background of Daniel's prayer proving that these 77s are 77s of years, but that's the way it has been fulfilled to the letter. There were exactly 483 years from the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, leaving one seven of these sevens, whatever they are, to be fulfilled after the crucifixion. And we know that that last seven is a period of seven years because the last half of that 70th seven is explained in Daniel 12, verse 7, to be a time, times, and a half a time. Or it's explained in Revelation, verse 2 or 3, of the 11th chapter to be 1260 days. It's explained further in the 12th chapter of Revelation, verse 6 to be 1260 days. It's further explained in 12th chapter of Revelation, verse 14, to be a time, times, and a dividing of time, just like you have in Daniel 12, 7. And that is further explained in 12 or 13, 5 of Revelation to be 42 months. So if the last half of this 70th seven is a period of a time, times and a half a time, or time one year, times two years and a half a time, three and a half years, or 1260 days, or 42 months. Naturally, the first half of this 70th seven would also be a like period, making altogether 2520 days, or 84 months, or seven years. And if the 70th seven is a period of seven years, naturally, that the first 69 sevens would also be periods of years. So we have literally here a prediction of 490 years determined upon Daniel's people Israel and upon Daniel's holy city, Jerusalem, to do six things. Now these 490 years are divided into three distinct parts. You'll notice verse 25. 25 seven sevens for the restoration of the city Jerusalem, and then another period of sixty-two sevens after that. Seven sevens and sixty-two sevens makes how many sevens? Sixty-nine sevens. Seven sevens are how many years? Forty-nine. All right, it was, according to Daniel, it would take forty-nine years to restore and build Jerusalem under the Messiah the Prince, after the commandment to restore the city would go forth. And then following the restoration of the city at the end of this first period of 49 years, or seven sevens, there was to be a period of 62 sevens, or 434 years, up to the time of the cutting off of the Messiah, the crucifixion of the Messiah. Thus you see there... There were literally 483 years from the commandment in 452 B.C. to the cutting off of the Messiah, leaving one seven years to be fulfilled sometime after the crucifixion of the Messiah. So these 490 years are divided into three parts. Or you can say the 77s are divided into three parts of, of years. Seven sevens, 49 years... 
62 sevens, 434 years, one seven, one seven years. All right, what was to happen during these three periods now? First period was to see the, uh, the restoration of Jerusalem with the streets and the walls, even in troublous times. And following the restoration of Jerusalem, there wasn't anything in particular going to happen, only there was to be a period of 62 more sevens from the completion of Jerusalem to the time the Messiah would be cut off without any definite prediction what would happen in those 434 years. Then, during the 70th seven, a certain thing was going to happen. The prince that shall come would make a covenant with the Jewish people for seven years. And in the midst of the seven years, he would break the covenant and set himself in the Jewish temple or causing the abomination of desolation as spoken of here, even until the consummation, even until the end of the age. Now, to me, this prophecy is a very simple thing. The 77s of years started 452 B.C. Between this era and this era, you see, there's the seven weeks or 49 years, during which time Jerusalem was to be restored. And then from that restoration of Jerusalem to the cutting off of the Messiah was to be 434 years. And then from the cutting off of the Messiah... To the time of the 70th seven, nothing is said what would happen. All we have is that certain things would happen during the 70th seven. Didn't have anything that would happen in particular between the 69th seven and the 70th seven. Nothing at all. But we know now, since we've lived several generations have passed from the time of the crucifixion of Christ till now, we know what is happening. The church age comes between the 69th seven and the 70th seven. The whole church age. That's why we have it on the chart this way. The 69 weeks ended with the crucifixion of Christ. The cutting off of the Messiah is explained here. Leaving one seven to be fulfilled later in connection with Israel and Jerusalem. The church age comes between the crucifixion of Christ, and the beginning of the 70th seven, or what we call Daniel's 70th week. Now then, you may say, why all that time? Why didn't the 70th seven follow the 69th seven immediately in succession, just like the first 69 sevens followed each other? Well, that's all explained here for us. You notice in verse 24 now, and let's look at that carefully. Six things were to be done concerning what people? Concerning what people? The Jews. How do we know that? Because it said these seventy-sevens of years are marked off, are set apart, are determined to be fulfilled in connection with thy people, Daniel's people, not the church, but thy people. And what city? And whose city? The holy city, it says here. Thy holy city. What city is that? Jerusalem. All right, these seventy sevens of years then were determined to be fulfilled concerning Israel and concerning Israel's city, Jerusalem. Not while Israel was scattered among the nations, but while Israel is in possession of Jerusalem. Oh, you say, if you said a while ago there were forty years following the crucifixion of Christ, that they still had control of the city of Jerusalem, why could not those seven, seven years be fulfilled during that forty years then? Well, there's another reason given here for that. You notice here six things were to be fulfilled during those seventy sevens of years. Look at verse 24 now. What was the first thing? Finish the transgression concerning whom? Concerning the Jews and Jerusalem. Now let me ask you a question. Has the transgression been finished concerning the Jews and Jerusalem? All right, that's one of these six things that hasn't yet been fulfilled in the whole of the period, regardless of where we place these periods. What's the next thing that was to happen? Make an end of sins. Has that been done concerning Israel and Jerusalem? 
Has it? Isn't Jerusalem still a sinful city? Are not the Jewish people still a sinful people? All right, the second thing has not been fulfilled yet. What's the third thing? Make reconciliation for iniquity. Concerning whom? Concerning the Jews and their city, Jerusalem. Has that been done? No. All right, what's the fourth thing? Bring in everlasting righteousness. Has that been done concerning Israel and Jerusalem? Has everlasting righteousness been ushered in concerning Israel and Jerusalem? All right, that hasn't been fulfilled yet. All right, what's the fifth thing? Seal up the vision. And the sixth? Anoint the most holy. Have those two things been fulfilled concerning Israel and Jerusalem? No, they have not. So we can definitely say that not a one of these six things have been fulfilled concerning Israel and concerning Jerusalem. Yet, that proves that if these six things were to be done during these seventy-sevens of years, that they haven't yet ended, regardless of what we say about it. Because these six things were to be done by the time the seventy-sevens of years were to be finished. In other words, they were to be finished at the end of the seventy-sevens of years. And since not a one of them has been fulfilled yet, and that proves some of these Seventy-sevens are yet future from our day. Not only that, but in the 23rd chapter of the book of Matthew, the last three or four verses, Jesus Christ looked over the city of Jerusalem just before the crucifixion this was. And he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered you together as a hen would gather chickens under her wings, but you would not. Now get this point. From henceforth, from henceforth, from this point on, you are officially cut off. From this point on, God is going to cease dealing with you. From this point on, your house shall be left unto you desolate. And you will not see me, he added, until you will say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All right, before the crucifixion, or just at the time, a couple of nights before the crucifixion, Jesus Christ officially cut off the Jewish people and told them that God's dealings with them have been ended at this particular period in history. And God will not deal with you again until the days of my return. And then you'll be willing to accept me, and you'll say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord when I do come. All right, now you see, Israel was broken off at the end of the 69th sevens of years. You get the idea? Leaving one seven years to be fulfilled sometime in the future concerning Israel and Jerusalem to finish these six things. Since the six things have not been fulfilled, since Israel was cut off because of unbelief at the end of the 69th week when the Messiah was crucified, for they said definitely, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. And it's all right, all over. Or as God is concerned, Israel were concerned, they had separated company right there. God quit dealing with them. And they were determined to fall by the edge of the sword to be led away captive into all nations, and their city to be trodden down to the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, fulfilling verse 26, where it mentions desolations for Jerusalem and Israel at the end of that particular war. That's why we place the church age between the 69th and the 70th weeks. The 70th week no more concerns the church than did any one of the 69 weeks. The whole of the 70 weeks, according to verse 24, were determined upon thy people Israel, not the church, not the church and Israel, not the church at all, solely upon Israel, and upon thy holy city Jerusalem, to finish the transgression, make an end of sins, make reconciliation for iniquities, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision of prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. All right, 
then we ought to look forward to a time when God will again deal with the Jewish people during the 70th week of Daniel. We put that here on the chart as the last seven years of this age. Between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus Christ. 